Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, digital infrastructure, and the networks within. And we are coming to you live from Times Square at DCD Connect 2024. And I am with Patrick Quirk. Patrick is the CTO of Nautilus Data Technologies and Ashley Sturm, who is the VP of Marketing for Nautilus Data Technologies. Ashley and Patrick, thank you so much for being here at JSATP. Thank you, Dean. Appreciate yeah, thanks it. Thanks for having us. You bet. So uh, I'm going to toss this one to you, Ashley. Right. Uh, for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about Nautilus Data Technologies? Yeah, so Nautilus Data Technologies really has got its core foundation initially in our zero water consumption technology, cooling technology, but mm -hmm. as of yesterday, um, we're officially public with what we are calling EcoCore. Uh -huh. It's a 2.5 megawatt block of data center infrastructure, um, which just really levels up the cooling technology. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about speed of deployment, mm -hmm. and we're talking about making data halls natively capable to handle several different types of cooling. Mm -hmm. So whether that's your traditional hot aisle, your liquid cooling, immersion direct to chip, we can make all of those things happen. Of course, Patrick being the engineer could geek out <laughs> all day long. I'm just barely scratching no, the think, surface. I think you nailed it. I think I think we're about to geek out though, Patrick. <laughs> I, I, I want to do this. Um, I have I have sat here all day since 10 a.m. and and cooling, of course, is yeah. something that we're talking about. Uh, but the way from my seat, uh, the next generation of technology does not happen without future forward cooling technologies. Um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about why cooling is so important to those future technologies? Yeah, um, really it's a great foundational question for data centers and, and really the entire information eco, you know, ecosystem uh -huh. as a whole. Um, you know, as we've all heard stories about AI and everyone knows about chat GPT yeah. and these things, right? So really what's happening is you're seeing a dramatic increase in the density and the power requirements in order to meet these application require, you know, these mm -hmm. application needs. And so, you know, you go back even just five years ago and a 20 megawatt data center was a large data center. Yeah. Today, the entry point is typically 50 yeah. and they want to be able to expand to 200 or more. So we've had a, you know, four to five fold increase in required density mm -hmm. um, and total scope and size and we over just the last few years. So, and the data center essentially brings power in, generates information out. Yeah. But the waste product is heat. Yeah. So all that energy going into generating the information comes back out as heat. So how do we best get rid of that heat in a sustainable manner and in a way that, you know, we can actually take advantage of some of it? Yeah. Um, okay. So I've had the luxury of learning a bit about EcoCore over the last couple of weeks. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the Eco EcoCore uh, technology system and, and what it ultimately means for the future of data center cooling? Sure. Um, really, what EcoCore is, is that our foundational cooling technology is really what enables us to be able to deliver the EcoCore modular solution. So as Ashley said, it's a two and a half megawatt block, mm -hmm. but that two and a half megawatts is fully expandable. So if you want to deploy a 10 megawatt data center all the way up to a 200 megawatt yeah. data center, we just scale it in two and a half megawatt blocks. Um, the real advantage of it is, you know, people have been doing modular construction for a long time, right? Yeah. This is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not anything new, but in the data center space, typically that was, that was met by either containerized solutions or you're delivering power skids or cooling skids, mm -hmm. because of our liquid cooling technology being embedded into it, we're able to do a fully integrated deployment. So we can deliver two and a half megawatts worth of capacity, essentially in nine shipping splits, and install it very rapidly at a data center site. The, you, you've said a couple of things, uh, but one that I, I keep hearing is that this rapid this rapid, uh, rapid uh, deployment implementation. I was on a panel yesterday and that was one of the, the biggest challenges that some of the data centers were talking to uh, with specific, so an, an enterprise comes to them and says, okay, I want, you know, I want 50 and I want it now and I'm gonna, I wanna scale that to 200 by the end of the year and they're going, sorry, we can't do that. A lot yeah, that's of, five years. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exa exactly. Yeah. And so, and a lot of that is, is what it is that you are doing. So you are effectively solving 
at least in part some of the challenges that they were talking about on that panel. Right. What we're really trying to do is, you know, how can we move more of the uh, manufacturing and, you know, the final assembly back into a factory? Because mm -hmm. the more you can do it in a factory with the prescribed build instructions and everything else, your quality is going to go up. Your speed is going to go up. If we start into a, a sequence of multiple builds, even across regions, we can start pipelining all of yeah. those builds and time it with when the site is ready and deliver, you know, met better than 70% of the infrastructure as a kitted part, essentially, that gets assembled into an existing uh, prefabricated stand-up building, right? I mean, it's really pretty straightforward. Well, it, it, and your locale opens up as yeah. well. So you got to imagine with that much prefabrication happening, well, now you don't have to have so many people on site with such a high level of expertise, right? So now you yeah. can go places that you necessarily couldn't access before. Right. So Dri drive that fit out down to an absolute minimum on site. So it's a easily repeatable. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Wow, that's uh, that's that's good stuff. Uh, Ashley, tell our viewers a little bit about what they can expect to hear from uh, from you folks over the next, let's say, twelve to eighteen months. Yeah, so I think the most exciting thing happened this morning. Yes, right. So we have engaged and we are working on a deployment with Star Campus. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, it's a four hundred and ninety-five megawatt campus in Portugal. Um, it is going to be completely cooled by the nearby ocean. Right, so we'll be able to offer those high densities in those data halls without any water consumption, with less power consumption. So we're super excited to be a part of yeah. that project. They're doing yeah. great things on the sustainability side themselves. So to find a partner that was that lockstep with us on how much that matters to us to be sustainable by design um, it was a great fit. You know, um, so we, we, you know, water cooling and cooling and sustainability. Big, big, big buzz topics here at DCD Connect. Um, you have your hats in both of those rings. Uh, that's uh, it's it, it's pretty good stuff. So um, from a sustainability, and again, we're going to go off script. We, no, we said good. from oh. a sustainability aspect, you know, what what kind of what kind of uh, weight does the sustainability aspect of EcoCore hold with? I guess the next generation of, of data center operators. So from from weight, do you mean you know how much how, influence how, how, the how, fact that well, it is sustainable? Yeah, what's the value yeah, there? Absolutely, Patrick. And the reason I ask that is because, um, and and it, it's, it, this is not provocative at all, but I am hearing rumblings of we can take a breath now. We can step back from from this being as urgent as it was, say, two or three years ago. And from my seat, I'm thinking, no, we can need to keep our foot on the gas. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, where, where, do, where do you folks stand? Yeah, so really, I mean, we designed EcoCore, and really our cooling system takes sustainability as a primary input into the design. Yes. So instead of doing it, you know, after the fact, you know, whether that's through buying PPAs with renewable power mm -hmm. or, you know, there's a lot of other ways, you know, counting... Uh, you know, accounting for all of your carbon and things like that, which are all important things to do. But if you bring it back to first principles and do it as part of the design, then you're actually going to have a longer term impact yeah. and be able to address the issues, you know, from a design point. And, you know, the, the thing that people kind of miss on sustainability is, you know, one of the, the best aspects and one of the best measures of sustainability is efficiency of design. Mm -hmm. And that's efficiency of design across a lot of parameters. How much space are you taking up? You know, can you use less copper, less concrete, less steel? All of those things yeah. lead to sustainability by design. And so as these AI workloads and things like that are demanding more and more power and higher and higher densities, those are actually more sustainable as a starting point yes. than a less dense, you know, huge data center campus that, you know, is only 20 or 30 megawatts but it's taking up what used to be an entire family farm, yeah. right? Now, if we can densify that, you know, we're not taking up as much space. We're leaving more for the natural environment. And then we're also using fewer materials in the building and in the operation of it. Well, and I was having a conversation earlier with someone and they asked, um, well, you know, does sustainability trump all? And I was like, well, let me be clear. We're not ignoring the economics right. of it. But because it is efficient by the design, it makes the economics better. Yeah, and that's exactly. the thing. Like, we're not we're not turning a blind eye to the fact that that still matters a lot, but both can intersect. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because there are a myriad of ancillary things that maybe people don't immediately think about when they're thinking about sustainability and efficiency and even portability for that matter. Sure. But when we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, the actual the fiber connections in within the data center, the lights in the data center, um, all of it, all of it contributing to big differences, both in, you know, it, the, it, the economies of it, but also the sustainability. Yeah. So it, it's really all kind of working together from that kind of ground up, something that you were talking about, Patrick, like start, you know, it's part of the design in, in its, uh, you know, um, its origin, yep. you Correct. know, yep. and, and that is a big deal because the future of the data center, you know, industry is that. Yeah. And, and data centers really need to move from being, you know, just being a power consumer uh -huh. and an information creator to being part of the overall infrastructure ecosystem. Because there's, you know, as as data centers climb to whatever percentage you believe, right, three percent, five percent, eight percent of the total global power, yeah. that's a lot of heat that's being generated. So how can we take that waste heat and turn that into something that's actually useful to further the sustainability goals and have data centers become part of the solution as opposed to you yeah. know the the big bogey that's the problem. Patrick, I'm so glad that, uh, that fellows like you are on the on the mission right now. That's that's good good stuff. We appreciate that. All right, and appreciate you both for being on JSA yeah, TV. Fantastic. All right, thank, thank you. For you. Having us. you bet, you bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay curious, stay connected, and we'll see you soon.